Hi everyone and welcome, this is the Apostate Prophet. When I was a Muslim, and especially later when I was very religious and active in spreading what I learned and lived by, I learned a strategy that is very common among Dawah people. And it doesn't matter whether these groups are fundamentalist groups, mysticists, or mainstream Muslims. The strategy was to approach people, especially non-Muslims, with softer things first and to sugarcoat Islam for more sympathy to make the message lighter for non-Muslims to take. Except in very heavy groups like these, that think you can convince a Western person to accept Islam by telling him how immoral he is. In Dawah groups, groups that call you to Islam, members are often told, don't talk with non-Muslims about rather controversial things. That might scare them. Don't talk about chopping off hands and feet. Don't talk about the serious details of Islamic law. And don't tell them directly what the Quran says about them and their religion. Instead, make it very sweet and tell them things first that they would like to hear. Make it interesting. Make it attractive. Bring them closer. Even closer. Even closer. Because once you have their attention and their sympathy, you can slowly take them inside Islam. And once they are inside Islam, there's just no way out. No, once they are inside Islam, they can learn about all the bad things. Because it is known that it is much more likely for someone to reject the religion up front than to leave it once they are inside. It's like an abusive boyfriend who introduced himself as the most caring man in the world. It's not a lack of decency, it's, it's for Allah. See, the strategy that I became so familiar with was one main reason why I decided to speak against Islam. I thought, I have seen this, I know this, these people are not telling the truth. They hide behind the apathetic Muslim population and say, look, most Muslims are completely peaceful people, while among themselves they criticize those apathetic Muslim people and want all of them to become more religious and serious. But to you they say, oh look, we Muslims are just this, we just want to live our lives. Don't listen to Islamophobes. They are exploiting trust and tolerance, and that pushed me to go out there and tell the truth. Let's take wife beating for example. They will never ever approach people and tell them the ruling on women and their disciplining up front. You can probably never see that. They'll beat around the bush, blame talks about it on reasonable critics of Islam, tell you about how much Islam values women and how it improved the rights of women in the 7th century. But they won't come to the point. Islam allows wife beating. All the other horrible rulings on women aside, Islam doesn't only allow. It orders wife beating. Yes, Islam tells men to be just to their women. Yes, Muhammad said that men shouldn't treat their wives horribly and then go to bed with them. Yes, he said treating your wives well is a good duty. And all of that is what Muslim apologists and Dawah people will tell you. But they won't tell you that a wife needs to be obedient, that it is a wife's duty to please her husband, that a man can beat his wife if she is repeatedly disobedient and that no one can question why a man beat his wife. That this right to beat wives was given to men directly by Muhammad, and his followers proudly declared it and practiced it immediately. You can probably see why they are not very open about this. Because especially in today's time, being honest and open about this would reveal to everyone, to a regular person, the darkness of Islam, and it would make their mission fail. They let you come to Islam first, and then explain to you how you should understand wife beating. Come on, man, it's just wife beating. It's totally reasonable. I challenge each one of them. Be honest about this. Tell people about this. Make a top YouTube video in which you say, yes, Islam allows wife beating. Let me explain. Or, hey, dear, hey, dear non-Muslim, do you want to know more about how great wife beating is? Do that. Establish a stand in London and in New York and tell people about how great wife beating is because it's a ruling of Islam. Allah knows best, better than the Western stupid human rights people. See how people react. Some even try to sugarcoat this by saying that men were only allowed to uh, beat wives lightly with a tiny object like this. I'm only beating you with a stick. Oh. Another topic where this is common is the hijab. They will use sweet words to explain how it is actually something that values women. Although it was ordered by Muhammad after his companion begged him to make such an order. And because simply looking at a woman, simply describing the look of a woman, is haram. Yes, and this is why Muslim women have to cover their body, so men don't sin. So the women don't sin in making the men sin by revealing their bodies. 
Islam is so intelligent, I can't even... They're also supposed to cover themselves because men shouldn't harass and molest women. Solution, cover up women. They are also supposed to cover up because, and I cite Tafsir ibn Kathir, one of the most respected scholars of the Quran, so that it will be known that they are free and that they are not servants or whores. For more, you can watch my video of the origins of the hijab and understand how far Islam is from modern society and women's rights and liberties and why Islamic dawahians are not fully transparent with this. Another tactic is something very illogical that seems to kind of make sense on the spot. What is the penalty for apostasy? What is the penalty for leaving the Muslim faith? Dr. Yes, Mukaddam, what is the penalty for apostasy? If it's an Islamic country, then the Sharia is very clear. Apostasy, apostasy is dealt with the death penalty. Thank you, that's all yeah, I well, want well, to hear. But what's, that, what's, the, what's the relevance between what happens in an Islamic country and Great Britain? I fear to see the connection. Oh, really? Uh, let me know, do you want the UK to become a Muslim country? And what happens if that happens? They tell you that you shouldn't obsess very much about a specific ruling, like killing innocent people who choose to change their faith. Because that was only a ruling that would be applied under an Islamically ruled state, and they will usually emphasize the past. What's hidden behind this might not be too obvious in the middle of a back and forth discussion, but if you stop there for a second, it doesn't need that much thinking. The person inviting you to Islam wants to spread Islam to everyone and wishes to live by Islam again. Every group that goes out and religiously converts people, except if that group is some marginal group that Islamic scholars reject as un-Islamic, like Quran-only Muslims or reformist Muslims, wants to end up in an Islamic state. And as you just heard, apostasy is punished with death in an Islamic state. But they'll say this was an irrelevant issue. It was only something raised by Islamophobes. Those stupid Islamophobes that have to jump into the middle of the discussion and interrupt your dawah. Das ist das Problem. They'll tell you it was complicated. It was only applicable in an Islamic state anyway. You as a Western person shouldn't worry about such <laughs> ridiculous things like death for apostasy. Although it still exists in multiple countries outside the West in the 21st century. And your country would, in their dreams, be one of them. The victim card. This, to be honest, is not really a strategy. It's more of a, a mentality. It's a mentality in the nature of Islam. When you look at the Quran, you'll see very often how it talks about those who persecuted the Muslims. The religion is based upon Muhammad and his followers being persecuted by the local mean polytheists. But not for no reason because Muhammad was highly disrespectful toward their traditions and idols and condemned them repeatedly. This gives the regular Muslim the mentality that everyone hates Muslims and wants to go after Muslims. I'm not exaggerating. The moderate, the religious, the fundamentalist Muslim. Everyone is obsessed with everyone hates us. They all want to destroy us. We need to unite. Although no one cares about you if you don't put your religion into everyone's face. The West even invents crimes for you and calls people who criticize your religion bigots and widely opens their doors, especially for you. But they'll tell you that the entire world hates them. Everyone is against them. They are persecuted and harassed and killed. And anti-Muslim bigotry is such a huge problem in this world. Everywhere. Everywhere. As you guys know, dear brothers and sisters, Islam is being attacked left, right, center, all over the world. This couldn't be further from the truth. If we look at actual statistics in the West, for instance, per capita hate crimes against Muslims are ridiculously low, so that we wouldn't even talk about them if it wasn't a popular topic. But what we don't really care about are hate crimes against minorities in the Muslim world especially Christians. There is such a huge persecution against Christians in Egypt, Pakistan, Nigeria, Sudan, and many other countries. If they happened in the West against Muslims, we wouldn't be talking about anything else right now. Muslims aren't remotely treated like this anywhere in the West. But I guess when the oppressor is the Muslim and the oppressed is the Christian, we don't care at all. Because Christians equals West, and West equals White, and White equals Powerful. What they also do is something quite common. When you ask about why the Islamic world is in such a misery, if Islam is so great, they blame the misery of the Islamic world, including Islamic terrorism, on the West invading the Islamic world. Although Islam as an empire, as empires, 
harassed and occupied half the world for a millennium. Although Muslims are disproportionately the leading political killers of Muslims. Part of this whole victim playing is also the word Islamophobe. Islamophobia. Islamophobes. Those evil, mean Islamophobes. Isn't it sweet how virtuous and right you appear when you claim you are just hated for no reason? Although you just want to practice your religion and spread it to everyone else and install Sharia law and punish those who dare to criticize Islam. While using this buzzword, Islamophobia, for prejudice, hate and violence directed at Muslims, they put simple criticism of Islam into the same category, which is unacceptable. That would be like equating the persecution of Christians in Muslim lands to online anti-theists making jokes about Christianity. Imagine. But they casually use the word Islamophobe for critics of Islam in order to invalidate the criticism that comes from them and simply paint the critics as haters and bigots against the poor victim that just wants to punish apostates. But while they say Islamophobia here and Islamophobia there, most... Dawah Barbies have pretty contemptible views of Christianity and Judaism and Hinduism, atheism, Buddhism, and the followers, the groups of these. To you they will say they are tolerant and peace-loving. But among each other, they will dream of Islam ruling the world, of everyone eventually becoming a Muslim. Islam is growing left, right, center, all around the world. and they will mock and hate these religions and their adherents. That comes to no surprise, because the glorious Quran is full of such hate. The Hadith are too, and so is Islamic history. If we really wanted to look for a phobia, there wouldn't be a bigger example for that than how the regular Muslim population, especially the religious one, views, treats, and speaks of the rest of the world. But yeah, play the victim, the hero that everyone hates. That way people will listen to you. Another thing they will do is to shower you with sweet words of love, kindness, and peace. Like, salam. <laughs> salam. For sharing, affection, love, and mercy. They're actually using the word and for one of the letters in salam. But we're not expecting anything bright here, anyways. They'll tell you that Islam loves and values peace, while believing that Islam should punish the blasphemer the heretic, the evil apostate, gays, immorality, and so on, while proclaiming a religion that orders to fight the people until everyone believes that Allah is God and Muhammad is his messenger, while believing that jizya, protection money, should be collected from the infidel, while believing in sex slavery that is sadly not possible today due to the evil West, stupid human rights, Many of these rather religious groups actually casually joke about sex slavery and dream about concubines, slave girls, and four wives. That's where the humor goes. Oh, especially about those sex slaves or wives that righteous Muslims are supposed to have in paradise. This beautiful giant sex fantasy for horny men with beards who go to heaven. They'll even be dishonest about this specific topic, although the vast majority of Dawah heroes firmly believe in this and expect to receive those virgins in paradise. They'll tell you that it is a confusing, misunderstood issue, that you shouldn't take it as some weird divine sex party in heaven. But Islam promises fresh, beautiful, full-breasted, mindless virgin women, fresh slave girls basically, with big eyes and transparent skin so you can see their bones. What the hell? Created specially for religious Muslim men. Juicy. And 72 of them are given to the martyr, who dies fighting for Allah or in different ways. Although even a fundamentalist Muslim who believes in this will easily dismiss your question about this or your remarks with something that includes the word Islamophobe. Or they say, oh, everything you know about Islam are 72 virgins. Well, it doesn't have to be the only thing someone knows, but that's pretty much enough. So yes, it is a beautiful giant sex fantasy for horny men with beards who go to heaven. It's a bit disgusting. Yeah, a bit. This guy stands in front of you and tells you about how beautiful his religion is, and you just know while standing in front of him that this guy is expecting to go to heaven and have sex with multiple mindless, full-breasted women. And finally, we hear it very often. You are taking this out of context. You're not. 
but discussing this would it would take a lot of time so why don't i keep this for another episode this would be very interesting but just a hint if a religious muslim especially a fundamentalist one tells you that you're taking something out of context and judging then maybe ask them to really explain the context to you fully and take some sources with you that will give them a bit of a headache after all this we actually have a list of lots of things you could ask the next person who approaches you and invites you to Islam. Tell them to be honest about these things, without beating around the bush, to explain how these things could possibly stem from a loving, merciful, wonderful, moral, almighty God who is totally up to date with human rights, liberties, and morals. Or oh, while you're at it, you should also add Muhammad's pedophilia with Aisha to these questions. Muhammad's marriage to a six-year-old girl whom he had sex with when she was nine and he was in his mid-fifties. No, it wasn't totally normal back then. Muhammad had a dozen more wives and those were at quite normal ages. But I'll go into that soon again in a dedicated video. For now, you get the point. When they tell you about the beauties of Islam, and how much you need it. They won't even talk about these things that they should be telling you up front because they know that this is controversial in your culture. And they would be talking about these things if they were really honest and caring. Don't fall for these tactics. Islam is a dark world, a dark ideology, a hopeless religion with no joy for a regular human being. Most of us who live today, including Muslims, are much better than what Islam has to offer. So the next time someone asks you if you want to hear a little bit about this beautiful religion, let them hear about this beautiful religion instead. And if you want a brutally honest reference, one that they read and follow as well, have a look at Tafsir ibn Kathir, the most widespread interpretation of the Quran that will make you understand what Islam really is, that they don't fully share with you, because it would turn you away from Islam even faster then a virgin turns them toward the Kaaba. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please don't forget to like, to subscribe and to share. Obviously, most of my YouTube videos are not monetized. If you want to support me and my cause and want to spread this, you can support me on Patreon. I appreciate all your contributions so much. I'll be back again. Have a great time and stay away from Islam. You won't get virgins.